My name is Antonio Trujillo Chavez, I'm born in Hurling, July 23rd, 1939. I'm on my way to be 85 years old, and I'm still here. They used to come and thank us, because this used to be a pretty rough ghetto area. And when I started putting the artwork, they would, came and thanked me that it was coming a little bit of art for me to deal instead of just... This lady came up and told me that her mother had uh, Alzheimer's, and she was real sick, and every time she asked her daughter, take me to the blue door. And my gate was all turquoise. And, and so she'd bring them, and she'd sit out there, and she'd look at that stuff, and then when she got done, she'd tell her daughter, now, you can take me back home. And then later on, she says, take me back to the door. I want to see what else he put up. <laughs> and when she passed away, her daughter came and told me, you know, I want to thank you so much. It gave my mom, well, my, my mom a moment of just seeing that there's change and there's good things happening. For me, this is a meditation place. I don't make it just for me. I make it, I have to, I try to have every kind of religion or thing. Religion is man-made, but spirituality is God-given. So if you were in the spiritual, you have no problem with religion. Oh, well, I think the art is, uh, for me, is being a prayer and meditation. It, 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 it makes me use my mind in the right direction. The yeah, I mean, create beauty instead of create destruction. Because everybody uses the energy different ways. Same energy, but different. It could be for stealing, robbing, or it can be for giving, helping, and doing. The energy does not know. You just like they say, the wind. Nothing wrong with the wind if you learn where I use the sails. Because I know a lot of people that are going emotionally. They're not drunk, but they're drunk in the spirit of what's going on in the other part of the country, what's going on here, and worrying about. And I said, sit down and find yourself. I got a lot of masks here. If you're wearing a mask, take it off and tell me, show me who you are. And then a lot of people said, okay, well, you know what? I was afraid. And I said, well, you, this is caused by somebody else telling you why you should be afraid. What are you afraid of? I don't know. And then somebody told me, you should be afraid. This is my triangle. I gave this for a club. Wisdom from Shout, the old man, the protector, who always guide me in my spirit guide. And that's my road runner, and, uh, and now this is new here. This, the guy who died was a relative of mine. He died of an overdose that killed this deer. And the other one represents peace. As long as I walk with peace and comfort, I will not have no resistance. This is my uh, square for the northeast, southern, and west, and this is my healing circle. Mirrors are a reflection of self. So the reason I always wear a mirror and I chipped it because you can, your brokenness will become your strength and your strength will be rebuilt your brokenness into a better spirit, mind, and togetherness. That's why I have a mirror in this direction. Everywhere I direction I go, I face myself. This is some of my artwork. It's all reverse mirror art. It is all done from the back of the mirror. From the 1800s, I took the idea. I used to do a reverse mirror art. They painted it and then they mirrored it. Well, I invented how to remove the mirror at one time, and I can repaint it from the back, and for me, it's a better job. <laughs> and this is... So this is what I do. Then I listened to George Washington Carver, where he said, uh, how can you get so much stuff out of the peanut? He was the greatest person in peanuts. And his sad statement was, how can you get peanut butter, jelly, peanut, this, brother? He says, if you love anything long enough, it'll reveal the secrets to you. And that's what the mirrors have done to me. You know, that you love it enough. And love is the greatest. He says, it didn't give me a spirit of fear, but love and a sound mind to overcome anybody's character defect, especially my own. And so that's what I like to teach the kids to, that, you know, love what you do. This is what I do a lot of my meditating. I always heard, uh, uh, you can always hear, if you can hear the bell ring, you hasn't lost your fire up <laughs> yourself. And so this is what I meditate. I love to meditate and burn incense. I like the smell of 
incense. I like the the beauty. And this is all antique prayer things that I've collected. You know, I was sitting here one day, and I had I looked back, and I had been out years ago. This Indian lady, beautiful Indian lady, came here to the door, and she said, "Can I talk to you?" And if you see with the alley, there's a little bag here with turquoise rocks and stuff. And they said, she said, I, I come to name you Little Owl. And then she left. I never saw her again, but I know there's a spirit guy letting me know that it's okay. I got 49 years, 49 years and six months of recovering from a seemingly hopeless state of mind and body. When I got to recovery, they, they asked me one question. Is uh, They said, uh, we're not here to help you stop anything. We're here to teach you how to live without a without having to have the uh, whatever abuse you have. And then I'm grateful that they told me that the first thing I asked is, my question was, what do you want from me? And they said, you don't have nothing we want. Until you don't want what you have, then there's no solution to your problem. But if you want to live a different way, we have a set of principles that teach you how to live that way. And I'm grateful for that. He said, you don't have to believe in anything. Every religion has spirit spiritual principles, but they want to apply to one human being. The spirit don't belong to one human being. The way the human being expresses his spiritual life is where you learn from. And I'm glad I ran to the people that were doing it. I, I came from a violent alcoholic family. My father was very dangerous, and uh, they didn't stay married that long, you know the divorces and all the stuff. I ended up living in Gila, the Gila River with my grandparents. Like My dad used to say, you'll never be nothing and you ain't going to be worth a shit. And I believed him. And so when I went to prove that I am somebody, I looked like a fool. <laughs> because you don't have to prove nothing to nobody. You are who you are. And now kids that have, like me, the dyslexia, I talk to a lot of people, they don't understand this lecture. When you get angry, you're not angry at you. I'm angry at myself. Even when I met some, some I get cussing, and my wife says, uh, there's nobody there, so I guess she's seeing somebody. <laughs> it is, it's my own projection of failure. Every human thinks that they're all a failure. You know, and if you can't come up to their standards, then that's why I found out that I'm going to do what I love to do is hard work. See, to comprehend the word serenity and peace is very hard for us because you think there's something wrong. Because, you know, a lot of resentments and cancers all come from a spiritual melody that I've talked to people that have cancer and I think I ask them, what, what is eating you alive? And they'll say, I don't want to talk about it. What is your greatest fear is to die? But there's no time for you to die. Nobody knows when you're going to die, why you're going to die for. It's how are you living? The basic is right now everything is okay. And the sad part is people say, uh, I was afraid this was going to happen. I say, well, hell, you brought it in. Whatever you fear will come about, whatever you love will come about, whatever you trust will be with you. But it's amazing that how powerful the spirit is that you can bring about that which you fear, but you can bring about that which you love. And I see people get healed from a lot of stuff once they find out where it came from. And they let go of what's holding on to them. That I've seen that all of a sudden the doctors say, I don't know what happened, but there's nothing there. And that's how powerful the spirit is as far as I'm concerned. You can heal body, mind, and soul. There's a lot of people who've dropped off stuff here, and I put it in the memory of their, whatever their spirit is. And that's what I like about that. This, well, all I, all I do is when I find something, I don't know if, it's, if it has something to do with comfort and peace, I put it on. My friend would never, the, journey, the longest journey starts with, a, for my case, is a single first step. The, the, the way you part the water in the sea, just put your foot in it and start walking. And then all this other stuff are just little simple things that people understand simplicity. And I, I pray for peace for everybody. You know, the only thing I know about spirit, you don't have to talk to me. I, I live in the spirit. I can tell when I'm out of spirit now. And that's when the judgment or fear 
or overthinking a situation, then I know I'm not present with divine order, which is divine order is present right now, right here, right now. You don't have to make no moves. Just sit there and see what you're wearing. You wear a turquoise. Get into the moment. And the moment is the only thing you're going to ever have to save you. Once you get out today and you move on to tomorrow, it's fear. You move to past, it's guilt. And then if you stay in the moment, you realize, right now everything's okay. Well, thank God for my wife. She found out that I, I've always been called a spit or a Mexican. And and she just looked up there because I always felt the spirit of the Indian world. And, he, and when she looked it up, I found out that I was 36.5% Native American and a little bit of uh, Spanish, Portuguese, 50%, and a little bit of Jewish, a little bit of black. No wonder I was messed up. I was so mixed up with all these people there. <laughs> but I love my heritage, you know, because I had it. I was an auger. Uh, Agriculture, what do you call those people that look for their Indian ruins and stuff? And I did that for a lot of years here. And I got in contact with some of the spiritual that you believe is not all damaging, it's all freedom to know that they were here. And that's why I love that now. And now I really love it because I've got a lot of raft from wearing this stuff, even from my own race, it was, used to be my own race. To say you left here as a Mexican, now you come back as an Indian. I couldn't come back as a white guy. No. <laughs> but you had to make humor out of the opposition. Because if you don't make humor out of life, you'll be humorless. I can laugh at myself and say, God, how could you be so dumb? And I said, because I was. <laughs> I've learned better as the age goes by, you know. I don't know what I'm going to learn tomorrow, but I'm, I'm really learning. Well, I... I I don't know, I've always had your hair, but I don't have a hair anyplace else. <laughs> so I was always different. But I, I cut it off one time, and what happened is when you cut it, when you shave it, it turns, your ear turns black. And so old people used to like to spit the finger and clean my ear. And I told him, it's not dirty, it's just black hair growing. So I finally said, no, I'm going to grow it back out. And I, I, you know, I'm a professional bullshitter. You know, I can give a big old spiritual thing, you know, when the aliens came. <laughs> you know, you got to have fun with what you have, you know, and, and I've I've enjoyed this because I don't know why, it's natural earrings or what? A little kid came up to me and says, that is really weird. And his ear, he's got a big old hole with a big old, and I'm weird. <laughs> I said, okay. <laughs> but it's, it's kind of like, use what you have for the enjoyment of your own pleasures, not anybody else's, you know. It's some gift that the spirit had given me because I met more people to hair my ears, you wouldn't believe. I had more fun with it. In Halloween, I was here at the food stand and the lady says, is that here in your ears? And I said, is it a full moon? Okay. See, I'm just going to draw on these, this, this, but these are broken mirrors, and I just finished chipping these. I got to polish them, and it's going to become, I've sketched it out already, so they're going to become one of these that I can wear these. And then I realized one thing, that I have everything I need to fulfill my, my job to the creator, which is doing art, leaving the world better than when I got here, and trying to love people, not to understand people, but to know that everybody goes to where they're going to get to where they're going, and if they don't get there, they weren't supposed to be there. So. To me, it's still that own self be true. Until you find the truth within you for your truth, you're going to be saved for somebody else's truth. Mm-hmm. <laughs>